we are building something more than a video game. We are building a symbol. And, it's, and I don't have the right for this young guy, for my investors, for even my team, which is exhausted. Mm. We say we were exhausted. I don't have the right as a leader to give up. is Joanna aka Jojo. I'm super excited today because we are here with Olivier Madziba. Olivier is the CEO of Kiro Games, a game studio in Cameroon. Computer scientist by training and passionate about games video between 2003 and 2006, he is a young Cameroonian from Yaoundé who learns only through his will how to create video games and on the internet totally self-taught. So he's going to talk to you today about his journey and about uh, his project. Hi, Olivier, how are you? I'm fine, Joanna. You, uh, it's very nice to be there with you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your time. So as I was saying, um, you're going to talk about yourself. So you know, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about you. Okay, so I am uh, Olivier Madiba, uh, the founder and CEO of Kiro Games, that the professional part. But beyond that, I am a father of two dynamic kids, <laughs> very, uh, how do you call it in English, exhausting kids. <laughs> uh, I, have a, I have a boy and a daughter, I love them with all my heart. And um, they are my inspiration because, you know, at some point in life, when we started all this project, it was about building a positive image for the next generation in terms of gaming, etc. And I, te I told it rationally, but now that I'm a parent, it's like, yeah, we have to do it. I'm also married to a wonderful wife, a very powerful wife, <laughs> you know, the powerful type. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, the powerful type. And um, yeah, I know that you will be sister like with her, Joanna. You, you seem to be the same kind of powerful <laughs> woman. And, yeah, and uh, beyond that, I love cats. I'm someone very, very joyful. I mean, I cannot stay uh, serious for 10 minutes, mm -hmm. always making a joke about something. Mm -hmm. That's something very difficult in professional conference because yeah. I'm like stay 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 con <laughs> because in the studio we're always doing chats about everything and mm -hmm. I'm someone who really love to stay on his couch the weekend. Mm -hmm. I'm very uh, I don't do sport. This is why I'm taking some weight I'm, I have to do it. <laughs> and yeah I play video games. And the, the funny part is when you start to make video games, you don't have enough time to play video games anymore. <laughs> but yeah, video games, movies, series, my family, my friends. I'm a normal guy, in fact. Yeah. And cats. I love cats. That's great. That's great. Thank you. Thank you, Olivier, to let us in into your uh, knowing who is Olivier <laughs> personally on the personal point. That's great. So tell me more about how you got into video game. I guess that it was because you were playing video game. Yeah, I think I have the common uh, the common story at some point. Uh, like the major part of video game designer, we were. I was a huge gamer when I was teenager. I had this first idea. Like I was playing Final Fantasy VII. And I started to imagine that, wow, if I had to make the final fight, this is how I would have done it, et cetera, et cetera. But then uh, oof, we, we started to make games like, you know, beginners doing some RPG maker stuff. And after that, we have to make the very epic things to open the video game studio here in Cameroon. Mm -hmm. And the funny part is, Funding a video game studio is hard everywhere, mm -hmm. even in the United States. Mm -hmm. But in Africa, you have some bonus stage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, you have the fact to prove that you are not a scam. Yeah. 
Yeah. So what I would say is when we succeeded to open Kiro Games, our first vision was really to be like Ubisoft of Africa, making fun games, mm -hmm. and there it is. But we evolved on the way, and now we are more like a Tencent mindset company. Like, we want to make video games, but we want to build around it a lot of other stuff for the common problem of everyone. Like, right now, we are making video games, but we are also building a fundraising platform to help everyone to raise funds like we did for our studio, but for more common projects. Mm. And I will talk a bit more about that. So the vision evolved. The reason why we do games evolved too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. <clears throat> that's good. That's good. And tell me, so you build that studio. Tell me about your the projects that you are you have currently uh, managing right now. You are currently managing. Yeah, uh, when we started Kiro Games, it was designed to be one project at a time studio. Like we make one good game for three years and we deliver it and we go on another game. When we rebooted our life in 2027, we decided that we have to become a multi-project uh, game studio. In fact, like right now we are working on two smartphone games. Uh, not two, two at the same times, but we have to deliver two smartphone games this year. Uh, we have to deliver a comic book of uh, Orion Universe. And we're also working on the FinTech platform. Mm -hmm. So it's like three projects in the same room, but we have to balance like everything is shifting well, uh, everyone is synchronized. And the main project we are working on right now in terms of... Uh, Smartphone games, we have two games, like the first one is puzzle plus fighting games. <clears throat> so it's like Kanji Crush plus Street Fighter in one game in African fantasy universe. Mm -hmm. So you imagine that you, you crush your puzzle and there is a fight happening in the other part of the screen mm -hmm. on the Orionic universe. It will be out, I think, by the end of March. And there is the huge other game we are making in French, it's called the, the responsable, like the boss, the elite. We are still trying to figure it out, mm -hmm. how to say it in English. Mm -hmm. So it's the first, it's, it's designed to be one of the most funniest game ever made in Africa for African. It's the first game that will allow you to be a civil servant in an African country, a humoristic African country where you have to manage your career, your love and your family. You know, this thing about what will be your choice, corruption or not? How will you manage your your wife, your side chick, if you decide to have one? Exactly, I was about and to ask you about that. Exactly. <laughs> the gaming experience as a woman. Yes. Like, play the life of an African woman uh, trying to raise their, her career mm -hmm. uh, from intern to minister. And with all the challenge our sisters live on the continent, like you, you have to manage your marriage with a good guy. But if you are too bad, you become a bad guy on the way. Oh, you wow. have your ex lover. You know, you know this ex lover. Know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I know the the yeah. super, you know usual thing basically. Exactly, and you have to decide if you will have your side story with him. Or uh, you decide if you want to, to walk to get your job or you, you seduce your boss, this kind of stuff in fact. Oh so it's really the real, oh my yeah. god. It's like Nollywood yeah. basically, but in games. Like all exactly. the yeah. exactly Nollywood in game. I think we will take this tagline, Nollywood in game. Nollywood when in we game. Go in, yeah. In Nigeria, <laughs> that's what we see in tagline. Play Nollywood in gaming. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, that's a great concept. Seriously, I think. Yeah, I think it took us. Definitely. It took us four years of work to design the team, to, to train the team and design the technology on Unity, by the way, to be able to do it. Ah, so, yeah, okay. thanks, Unity. But we are also building like a little engine on the top of Unity engine 
But you need to help us a lot to make it happen. Okay. A lot. All right. That's great. That's great. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. And tell me, to you know, this show is, as I was telling you earlier, is this show is made to, to get the, the gaming industry uh, attractive to, to okay. our peers, you know? <clears throat> So what would you what would you um, say about your success and your challenges in building that studio? Do you, do you have any uh, example today? Yeah, well, I have a lot of stories about it. But let's say on what is can motivate someone to see that Africa has a huge potential. Uh, from the statistic I have met with a partnership with Huawei. Uh, we agreed on the fact that there can be like 100 million players in Africa paying like 0.3 USD, I think. I don't, I don't have the right number in USD, but in Africa in 2030, uh, we can be able to generate like 1.3 billion USD of turnover uh, of because of microtransaction across the continent. So imagine if you are a studio world who only own like 10% of this market. You see, you will generate like 130 million per year on Africa. And what would be very interesting is that uh, since you will have a lot of low cost, you will maybe use like 50 million, so let's say, Mm-hmm. 70 millions for turning, marketing, etc. Mm-hmm. But you will have the mindset to invest the rest mm-hmm. on other youth in another areas of the mm-hmm. continent. Because, true. and that's, yeah, because since we have the right mindset, we'll have a lot of cash and we'll invest it in everything that matters where mm-hmm. often people don't invest because they are not in Africa with us. Mm-hmm. That's really the vision we have. And uh, what I will say is that what story can I share is we have to build this way. We have to, no one has ever done it in Africa, build the market of 1.3 billion per year. Mm. No one has ever done it in the history of gaming in the continent. So Mm. we are the pioneer Mm. and we have to face a lot of challenge. Like we don't have stats. We don't have proof that it will work. Uh, we yeah. will talk with some people who will not understand our reality on the ground. Mm-hmm. We'll have to face the fact that other external studios want to extend their market share here without mm-hmm. investing on us. Exactly. And it yeah. will be hard. Everything, we often have the feeling that everything is against us. But that's also why it's challenging and where we think that the glory will happen because we also have a lot of sh- good stuff. Mm. One main challenge that we will face when we on this world is the human resource. Because until there is a studio who really succeed, no one will be able to fund video gaming training with African realities. I have something that I've said to your friend Morgan, thanks for the networking, by the way. Okay. Is that, you know, when you, you, you recruit an artist in some other studio around the world, mm-hmm. uh, the most part of them will already have, um, you already have read like 10 or 20 books of fantasy in their life, mm-hmm. you know, because there is this infrastructure, education, mm-hmm. pop culture pipeline when you are a kid in USA and you want to make games, you will read fantasy books, etc., uh, etc. Et mm-hmm. But when you have someone in Africa with a draw, an artist in drawing, for example, first he have to fight against his family <laughs> to have the right to draw. So mm-hmm. you can imagine the, the number of traumatizing <laughs> he have to face off when so he don't even know how to be in a safe place anymore. Mm-hmm. We, we also have to fight the fact that when someone comes in the studio. We have to make like three months to six months to make him feel safe enough to stop to fight against everything. Mm. This is something you will not have to do every somewhere else. Mm. You have to build something in him that is still out. Someone is not wow. trying to hit me here. 
Wow. Someone is not trying to, because when you come and you say to a drawer that, okay, try to, to work color it there, try to, he's fighting because he's like, oh, it's like my father telling me that I'm yeah. not good enough. Yeah. And you have to work wow. to, to coach it. This is the huge part that we have done in Kiro. We have built a process for that. And uh, wow. it's also okay for the coders, for the, so the human resource is not even about the skills. It's about the human being behind that are really broken. Even me, I was literally broken when I opened the studio in 2013. I was emotionally shut down in my personal life. I was just living through video games and it was hard for my wife. And I almost ruined my marriage. I just came out from this broken state five months ago. If we had these interviews five months ago, mm -hmm. you will have a Madiba Olivier very like burnout in the face. And I will be telling you about the Valhalla. <laughs> there in Africa, we are warriors. Ooh, I was like, yeah. But no. <laughs> But uh, I'm glad, yeah. I'm glad actually that you feel better and you have uh, this positive energy and vibration, high vibration. Yeah, yeah. You know, and the, the so, good thing is, it's not because everything is easier. We still have the I same challenges. Of course. But I just, I just have a lot of trainings, human trainings that where my investors and my mentors told me that man, if you continue like this, you will die. Mm. switch you can do the same stuff but without the the, the toxic energy mm. around you exactly. fighting everything mm -hmm. and now yeah we still have challenge but it's a total different mindset and i i am training the team to make it like guys we are not in valala anymore we are more <laughs> like an orchestra trying to build <laughs> some piece of hearts Okay, okay. And the energy in the studio is well better. People make better jobs without the toxic stress. We are still stressed, but the positive one. Wow, thank you. Thank you. Thank and you. let me just give you a good, good, good story of the first time when we started to fund the studio. Like, this is one mm -hmm. top story. You will never find it somewhere else on earth. So we are in 2013, after a lot of epic battles, and we got the money, like, for the first time in history, Cameroonian funded a video game studio. We are two weeks before the opening of the studio in November 2013. My first team of drawers come in my office. The studio was not even finished, but... I had another office and they would come to me and they say, okay, guy, we listen that we have the fundraise, the, the fund, we have been funded. Uh, what we want you to do is to double the salary. And I was like, what? Guys, I'm transparent. We cannot double the salary because of the budget, et cetera, et cetera. They were like, no, man, we know you will steal this money. We're in Cameroon. Everyone who make this kind of project steal the money and we leave us with nothing. So we want our chair of the thing. And I was like, serious guy, we are making history. And they were like, you will not win us. So what you should know is two weeks before the opening of Kiro Games, we didn't have a team anymore of artists. I have never been so stressed in my life. Like I had already took like 1,000, $100,000 for like 50 person in the world. And I didn't have a team. And I was starting to figure the bad buzz about, this is what we said, African cannot make it, mm. blah, 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 blah. Mm. And we had to recruit without letting the bad news go out. Mm. <laughs> so if you go on the Orion Facebook page, you will see a recruitment in November, 2013, like, hero recruit reservist. <laughs> so and everyone someone was entering like I want the job we were like mm, you, you know there is no place for you we will see if you have a place for you but in fact oh, we were like oh my god it's good we take him <laughs> so this is, and we have a lot of another big part of the Kiro game moment I want to share with the community is like let's go behind we are three weeks before the release of Orion. Mm -hmm. 
Orion is our first PC game, the first African fantasy PC game in the history, one of the top African game done on the continent so far. Three weeks before Orion, I was down like never before. Mm. All the team was exhausted, burnout was everywhere. I had a lot of leadership mistakes that I've done that I was paying the price at the end of the course. And I started to be uh, depressed because I had the feeling that it was because we are black. Mm. And since we are black people, we don't know how to, to be excellent till the end. We are still complaining every time about the fact that we want things to be easy. So I had this huge breakdown about the fact that maybe we are doomed, like we don't have it. We don't have it. Maybe they are right at some point. We, even if we give someone give us the money, the, the tools, we don't have what it takes to be excellent when things start to become very hard. Oh, because everyone was well, complaining. Maybe like negative self, self talk. Like I was totally down. And what you should know is that I. <laughs> yeah, I was I was sitting down there in the night in the neighborhood. I was starting to to write a post on Facebook on my Facebook page mm. about how I am quitting. Mm. Like hero game is finished. I quit. I cannot work with this with this team anymore. I am tired to to push people to be their best and I'm tired that they see me as the devil in mm. hurt because I tell them to do what they say they want to do, you know, this boss problem. Mm. And I was tired. I was tired and I I wanted to quit. I wanted the whole planet to know that we are doomed in this continent and never again someone have to dream. And, mm. No, I was literally break down. But the miracle is that just at this moment, one random little boy somewhere in Cameroon wrote me something on Facebook Messenger. I don't know if it's God who tell me. Tell, this, this little boy was uh, 15 years. He was telling me that he's in, he's his, he don't have a father, he don't have his mother anymore. He's living with aunt and uncle, very bad people hurting him, insulting him. He have a lot of dreams and no one believe in him. And he said me that he often think about suicide. He think about giving up. But what keeping alive is to know that somewhere in Cameroon, we are breaking walls to build a video game with all the problem we have. This was the first time I realized that this is not my dream alone anymore. Exactly. That we are building something more than a video game. We are building a symbol. And, it's, and I don't have the right for this young guy, for my investors, for even my team, which is exhausted. Mm. We say we were exhausted. I don't have the right as a leader to give up. And since that day, I never give up anymore. This was the only time I gave up in me in this project. And yeah. Mm. Wow. That's a great story. Thank you, Olivier. Yeah. I was about to cry, actually. Wow. Thank you. So that's a great segue. What do you need from help since it's not your is is not for you anymore. So here you've got a platform. What help do you need today? Do you have a fundraising? Please tell tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, Kiro Games. The new vision of Kiro Games is to become one of the company which will fix the opportunity uh, problem in Africa. We want to make games, comics, animations, entertainment product that will inspire everyone, mm -hmm. of course. When you are a kid, you are a young adult, you will play. You will feel inspired by the story. We, we, you have fun, but you will feel a lot of inspiration behind everything we do mm -hmm. at Kiro Games, at least like 90%. Mm -hmm. But we think that after inspiration, because there is a lot of conference about inspiration, but we are very tired and pissed off, to be honest, on the fact that when people finish to tell us in Africa that we have good skill, blah, 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 when it's about funding, no one is there anymore. 
Mm. It's like, no, go and do it and we'll fund you after. So we want to fix the funding problem of this continent. Africa is not poor, it's just bad management. Even in terms of money, we realize that there is a lot of money running through the continent. Mm. Uh, it's just that this money don't run on the right uh, flow to let everyone get his share and everyone get dignity, etc. We want to build a company that will fix that. Mm -hmm. So we have Kiro Games doing games and we have Kiro Robuntu doing fintech in funding, like building the best investment pipeline for Africa based on how we raised money for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And yes, we are raising 1 million USD right now to make a proof of concept in Cameroon before scaling. Mm -hmm. And so what I will say concept, is that, yeah. The proof of concept is for both projects or is it for Kiwu Ubuntu? Uh, more for the gaming part, okay. but Kiwu Ubuntu have its own path that we are already setting up with our own government in Cameroon okay. uh, to make it happen. Okay. And other partners, so we are still uh, raising funds in a lot of stuff. So we are expanding to literally be a supportive Mm -hmm. player for all the ecosystem of entrepreneur as we can. Mm -hmm. That's good, that's good. So you've got Kiru Games, Kiru Umbutu. Now you are raising one million US dollar for the uh, uh, the Kiru Games Orion project, mm -hmm. is that correct? And, uh, yeah. and so I'm going to put all the link in the description box. Or, and that's okay. going to be uh, for the viewers, you know, the viewers will be able to go directly on those, on those links okay. and, and uh, participate and give and really support you to into the, into your purpose, really. Yeah, <laughs> what I will say about the fundraising is that it's not a crowdfunding, it's an equity crowdfunding. Mm -hmm. So it's like you buy shares of Kiro Games, you become a shareholder, in fact. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, What I can say is that we are building something big. It will take a lot of time, a lot of risk. Mm -hmm. So we will fail a lot in terms of battles. Mm -hmm. But the only promise I make to my shareholders is that we will never quit. And if there is a way, Hero Team will find it to build one of the gaming leaders of the Africa. Great. If there is a will, there is a way. So thank you yeah. very much, Olivier, for your participation. Thank you for your stories. I'm sure that our viewers here are going to be very, very uh, emotionally attracted by you and by your project and support you with the uh, fundraising. So viewers, thank you for all your time as well. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. This is Johanna, aka Jojo. Oh, 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 oh,